topic that should be getting a lot more attention but isn't. St. Louis is on fire. The Bridgeton landfill still smoldering. That's bad enough, but it happens to be smoldering next to nuclear waste that was buried. Talking about it is Robert Alvarez. He has been invited by the Missouri Coalition of the Environment, and he's speaking tonight on Hollenberg Drive at the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 513. The, uh, the uh, speech starts at 630. Robert Alvarez, you are a uh, nuclear waste expert and a senior scholar at the Institute of Policy Studies. Thank you for joining us here in studio. Thank you for having me on your show. How worried should we be about this landfill burning next to nuclear waste? Well, I think um, it's uh, something you need to worry about, uh, mainly because the uh, material that was disposed in the landfill is uh, among the largest concentrations of uh, radioactive materials that were uh, generated at the uh, Malincrot uh, chemical plant during the 1940s and 50s, and that uh, this is not your ordinary landfill. It, it, uh, the, the amount of radioactive waste there in terms of certain kinds of, of ra radioactive materials are actually greater than what you would find at other nuclear weapons sites. But it's in a municipal landfill, it was dumped there illegally, and that uh, there's always the potential if, uh, if a fire hits the area of uh, some of these radioactive particles becoming airborne, and then people might breathe them in. Right. Uh, they say, well, first of all, it's safe now, right? Well, I mean, I think you can say safe in terms of of uh, no immediate harm to people. I mean, we're not breathing this this nuclear waste now. Not that I know of. Okay. This landfill that is smoldering underneath, they're not going to put it out. They say it's impossible to put out, but they also say that it is of never going to reach the nuclear waste and we shouldn't worry about it. True or false? Well, I think the my answer to that is that I've worked in uh, the nuclear industry for about 40 years, and it's a surprise when there are no surprises. So I don't think you can make these kinds of blanket statements. This waste should never have been put there in the first place. It is a substantially concentrated. It contains a certain uh, isotope called thorium-230, which is considered one of the most radiotoxic materials uh, that have been generated. And uh, you just shouldn't be taking risks. Uh, but what I've learned in terms of just a bit of research I've done in the last few months, uh, this is at least the second uh, fire that's occurred out there. And landfill fires are, uh, are fairly frequent across the United States. So here's a question. The landfill's burning. It's not going to be a put out. It's near this nuclear waste. Why don't they just remove the nuclear waste? Well, there were, there were, it's certainly something that the government had been thinking about, uh, that government, government employees at the staff level had been advocating for nearly two decades. And uh, when this waste was uh, first illegally disposed there in 1973, uh, uh, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission had responsibility for it, and uh, they did several studies. Uh, they they surfaced several documents that indicate that advocated uh, removing these wastes, and uh, this was considered one of the top ten of the uh, NRC's most significant uh, dump sites that they had to pay attention to. But something happened in 1995. I really don't know. But they suddenly they turned this over to the Environmental Protection Agency and claimed that the uh, EPA was better suited to do this and that they didn't want to create a duplicative effort. And since that time, the EPA in 2008 uh, made a decision, uh, which they might be reconsidering, uh, to just leave it there and put a cap on it made of construction debris and clay and some sand. and. Uh, uh, that that does I don't think that that's a, a advisable thing. I mean, this has got this has got radioactive waste that you would expect to find at a nuclear weapons site or a commercial radioactive waste landfill, except that uh, because of the where the landfill is located, uh, you know, it's in a densely populated area. It's it's experiencing at least two. Uh, it has experienced at least two fires that we know about. 
It's on the alluvial floodplain of the Missouri River. It's about a mile, mile and a half from the river with a fluctuating water table. Uh, all these conditions uh, mean that, uh, that th this, this, if this were considered a waste site, it would be forbidden under current standards. Are there any other cities, any other metropolitan areas where there is a dump site like this in the middle of town? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, there are places like in New York City, warehouses and uh, places that handle the same material, by the way, that came out of the Mallinckrodt uh, plant, but not in these kinds of quantities. Uh, these were more discreet uh, problems, but nothing, nothing quite like this. It's uh, a conversation you're going to have tonight at the International Union of Operating Engineers, Local 513 on Hollenberg Drive. It's at 630. The Missouri Coalition for the Environment has brought you in. Robert Alvarez, you are a uh, senior scholar at the Institute of Policy Studies. Um, enjoy St. Louis. Hope you get a chance to see the uh, arch. Thank you. I do. We actually plan to spend an extra day here. All right, good. And uh, make sure you get a uh, McGraw concrete from uh, Ted Drews and uh, say nice things about St. Louis when you go back home. I certainly will. Thank you. It's uh, 845 here on the Big 550.